I don't even really drink beer, but uh, for you guys, I will definitely have one. Oh shit. I gotta wait for a minute. <laughs> All right, sip of foam. Let's go. I'm a professional skateboarder, and I love cars. Probably, if I remember right, there was a kid in the sixth grade that had one. After school ended that year, I like spent all summer mowing grasses and you know getting paid. And I bought my first Steve Caballero board. I think it was in '87, '86 or '87. I just went to his house and got to like see all this stuff. Mike Blayback, uh, this photographer, <clears throat> excuse me, was shooting cab, and I was like, dude, I'm going. So I just tagged along, and and uh, yeah, I don't know, it's great. Uh, growing up in Michigan was pretty cool. I mean, um, I grew up in Grand Rapids, which is on the west side of the state. It's like a blue collar town. It's pretty tough. Like, you know, my area, my schools were pretty rough. So I learned how to, you know, respect the laws of the land pretty fast in life. You know what I mean? Holy smokes! I have since heard of people on. Dude, I got in cars when I was. Super little, man. Uh, it was like Cannonball Run, you know what I mean? Cannonball Run 2 was like my favorite. I had the Countach poster on the wall. I watched Knight Rider and even shows like Air Airwolf, you know what I mean? With like the super sick helicopter that made ill moves and stuff. Uh, I'm waiting, hot shot, let's go! I went pro for the Alien Workshop in, nine, I think it was the end of 96. Bracelet and the matching necklace, and them two shiny VVs blowing in your ear. New gun, new tools, new album, new year. I got my first sponsorship, and that was like the big break, you know? And, and the cool thing about that is you have an opportunity, like somebody opens the door for you, and it's kind of up to you to like walk through the door or just and here's my chance, and you just like break through and you try to do whatever it takes to make it. 94 Accord, I think, is what I bought. I did uh, the very first DC Shoes televised commercial for DC. My name is Josh Kaylee. Skateboarding is basically my life, but there's more to me than just skateboarding. But Ken Block, who owned it at the time, was like, yeah, man, like, thanks for doing the commercial, like, blah, blah, and I, and I was like, look, man, um, the commercial was real tough or like whatever the pitch I was and I was like, can you, can DC buy me rims, you know, for my car? And he was like, really? That's what you want? And I was like, yeah, and he fucking bought me. He's like, yeah, tell me what you want. So I, I, I picked out Volks. Dude, I was like, the rim cost more than my whole car, you know what I mean? And I put it on and like, I hooked it up. I put um, suspension on it, headlights straight out of Japan. Would go to the Philly street races and now it was on and cracking until one morning I woke up, um, I, I walked out of my house and my car was gone, they stole it. And they found it four or five days later, just stripped. The funny thing is, is that the headlights were still on it, the suspension was still on it, my mini disc player was still in it. <laughs> but they, they took like the doors and all like the body shop shit, you know. Oh my God. I remember skaters were into civics. Like Deerdick was super into civics, Kareem Kamal was into civics. I think they even had a crew like the Civic Nation, you know what I mean, or something like that. Me, living in Philadelphia, I was actually like going to the street races um, every night. I would skate love all day, and then bang, we would go to the street races at night. I bought my first like real, after the Honda, I bought a uh, 528 BMW, and I took that to the street races and, and souped it all up and tried to do what I could do, it didn't do shit. Then I bought Damon Way's Range Rover, his supercharged Range Rover. Took that to the street races, 
and gave my ass stomp. But it wasn't until I like got in, in the M5. And the M5 was like, at the time, a pretty strong car at the Philly street races. Oh wait, we got a cop on the right. What we do? Especially on the freeway racing, because we would get kicked out of the street races and there was a bridge called the Platte Bridge that took you from South Philly where we raced back into the city to where the stadiums are. And then, you know, these were the other racetracks. And we would do um, who could get the top mile an hour on, on the Platte Bridge. And I had it for a little while, 152 is what it was. And you had a lift on the top. So you'd be coming up the bridge and then you had a lift so the nose would come down so it would stick to the road going over the crest. Yeah, but obviously that was like, that was back in the day though. I keep it on, I keep it on the airstrips nowadays. <laughs> I didn't know Ken that well, and you got to remember, I was like the rookie rookie, you know, and Ken was like the boss. I mean, he was always cool, like, well, what's up, Josh, what's up, Ken, like, peace, but, if, you know, the reality was, is like, I'm not getting in Ken's car, Ken's not taking me, you know, down to the store. Get in, loser, we're going shopping. I didn't really know that Ken was a motorsports guy. I was in Japan at a, at a DC store opening, and Goldie, was DJing and was telling me about Gumball, the Gumball 3000. I pitched it to Ken, you know? I'm like, dude, it'd be great coverage for DC, like the whole nine, and, and DC Shoes paid for me and Derek to go on the 2002 Gumball. We don't have a clue where we're going. We didn't go to the checkpoint. We got stuck in the mountains, I think. And then Ken and Damon were like, yo, we're going now and it just I don't know it just Ken just in the car world in my opinion from my perspective just went from there into like holy shit you know what I mean muscle cars nowadays I think it's just the nostalgia feel the smell the rumble the like I don't know I'm digging muscle cars these days Nineties route, without a doubt. There's some good current stuff, and it's hidden, and you have to find it. You gotta look for it. But nineties, it seemed like it was more culture based, more reality of people with what people were dealing with and the stories they were telling. You know what I mean? It, it, to me, it's more uh, authentic. But all the sound the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any Oreos, the vanilla. Double ones, Oreo for sure. Me and Colin McKay, another pro skater, uh, started Heliclips. We were like, man, skateboarding could use like a cool, you know, aggregating place instead of trying to go all different, you know, websites. We were just like, let's just put everyone's stuff in one spot, make it easy. While we were doing that, I'm still, you know, in the car world. I don't race in the street anymore, so I go to all these airport events, and I would be filming everyone's cars, and, you know, I just had all this footage and was like, damn, man, we should start a thing like Heliclips, but in the car world. So I assembled a little team together and, and created Speed Society. The Camaro came about because I was living in Michigan. Um, I had invested into a performance shop called All Speed Performance, which is now All Speed Customs. Brian Moat, the owner at the time, he owned that Camaro. The money that I put in to kind of rebound the company wasn't enough. And it ended up getting to a point where I was like, look, I, I can't keep throwing money at this. What's up with that Camaro over there? Why don't I hold the title? To that car until you can pay me back. Bad business move, really. Six, eight, ten months, I don't remember how far down the road it was, I realized I wasn't getting my money back. I got my money, bitch! They don't call me bitch, I'm a grown man! Bitch, 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 bitch. God, you're mean. So I, I told him, you know, out of a courtesy, I was like, listen, I'm gonna try to sell the car to try to get some of my money back. So I call a guy I know down in Chicago to come take a look at it who buys and restores these cars. And uh, he came up, he offered me 2,500 bucks. And I was like, are you out of your 
to mine. Like I got 16 grand in this. I was like, well, I'm not getting rid of this thing for only 2,500 bucks. So um, I budgeted 35 grand to try to get it back on its feet. I put together a proposal that I sent to DC and I sent to uh, Marquez Design, which does interior stuff and you know a couple other places. And I got back 20 grand from DC. Marquez, you know, donated all the fiberglass interior pieces and I Forged Wheel Company donated wheels to it. So I actually just got, you know, 30 grand worth of stuff for it, plus my 30 grand that I budgeted for it, which was gone in literally an hour and a half on suspension and whatever. Uh, and I just started building it and it took me seven months. My vision for that Camaro was highway M5 touring car, just something that was like German influenced to go 200 mile an hour on the freeway, you know, on the Autobahn, but it be a 69 Camaro muscle car. And I think we nailed it. <laughs> Everyone has like their own favorite, their own type of car, you know, like Deerdick just had the Ferrari 488, which is badass, ain't my thing. Steve Caballero has a bunch of like 1940, you know, or 30 Fords and, you know, stuff like that, which is super sick, ain't my thing. Uh, Kerry Getz was a big Porsche guy. Uh, Bucky Lasik, you know, big Subaru guy. Um, Ken Block, you know, he buys shit. He's had every car you can imagine. The Hoonicorn is badass, man. It really is, especially now it's twin turbo. I see what he's trying to do. I see what he's trying to go after. I think I would, would like to be a race car driver. You know what I mean? For sure. If, if I could trade, I would trade to be a race car driver of some sort. Dude, she might be, man. I don't know. I don't know. She's pretty good. But she doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't understand like what she does yet, you know? She's just good at what she does. <laughs>
I'm Josh Kalis, and I'm buzzed on two beers, and I'm out. Ugh.